Hey everybody, this is Noah, and I want to talk to you guys today about what I think is the absolute best setup for AI, local and web-based AI, for students and faculty right now in, it's the end of April in 2025. So as you guys know, I am a huge fan of OpenWebUI. I have it hooked up to a number of external models, and I also have a whole bunch of local models for private AI use. So what do I think about this? I think OpenWebUI is an absolutely phenomenal way to use local models. I think it's a great way to connect to APIs, but let's talk about hardware for a minute, okay? So you probably know with local models, you're constrained by the hardware you have. So the question that often comes up is like, oh, do I need a 3090 or do I need a 4090, maybe even a 5090? Because that's what you see all the YouTubers have, right? That's, that's what you see everybody have. Well, here's the thing, okay? Here's what I wanna show you. I have an eight gigabyte GPU of VRAM. I've been thinking about this a lot. I've been thinking about, do I need more? Do I need more VRAM? Do I need, do I need more compute? Do I need more power? Will it, what will it actually get me? And here, here's where I've landed. The absolute best hardware for LLMs is what you have right now. So that is, that is my opinion, is what you have right now. So let me walk you through why I think this is the case. All right, so I'm gonna talk about this from a use perspective for students and faculty. And I'm also gonna talk about this from a hardware technology and LLM perspective. So let's talk about hardware technology first. So as you guys know, a few weeks ago, I did a video on how I reserved the uh, NVIDIA Spark or Digits or whichever one of those things they're calling it now. I think they're calling it Digits. No, they're calling it Spark. It was Project Digits, now it's the Spark. So you saw a video on how I reserved the Spark. The reality is I don't think I'm gonna buy it. So I've been thinking about, should I upgrade my GPU? Now, let me give you an example of what I've been thinking about. So one of the cards that I've been thinking about is this 4060 Ti. So as you know, I have a regular 4060 and it has eight gigabytes of VRAM. This one here has 16 and it's, you know, a little less than 500 bucks. Yes, it's refurbished. It's probably not the best thing out there, but it's quote unquote cheap, right? At like less than 500 bucks. So I was thinking about, you know, I can double my VRAM for 500 bucks and I can probably sell my current 4060 for maybe like 200 or 250 bucks. So in the end, I'd probably only end up spending like $250. But in reality, when I started thinking about it, what does 16 gigabytes get me that I'm not already, that I don't already have, right? And the reality is I don't think it actually gets me that much because when you look at some of these models, let me pull up an Olama. So when you look at some of these models, right? So let's go to, Let's see what it's got, 3.3, uh, that's the 70 billion. I'm never gonna be able to reach that, right, in a realistic amount of money, 43 gigs. No, just not happening. Uh, DeepSeek R1, lots of people love DeepSeek. Well, let's look at some of these tags here, right? So the seven or eight billion parameter versions, those fit within my eight gigabyte graphics card. Look, four or five gigs. Uh, as soon as we bump up to 14B, we're now exceeding, but this will still run well on my machine um, because it's only nine gigs, so only one, one gig spill over into RAM. But then when we get up to 32, no, it's just, it's just gonna be really, really slow, right? So in, in reality, what does this get me? I can already run the 14, I can't run the 32. Now let's go look at a different model. What about Mistral? Well, Mistral Small, as you know, is one of my all-time favorite models, but it's 15 gigabytes here. So I could technically barely squeeze this in to that 16 VRAM, right, in Q4. It, it should, in theory, fit. So that's good, I, I would be able to run Mistral Small. So that would make me happy. But is Mistral Small notably better than, let me pull up some of the new models here. Is it notably better than Granite 3.38B, which is five gigabyte file? I don't know, it might be. But I can tell you this right now, if I think about, do I wanna spend 500 bucks to run Mistral Small locally instead of using the 100% free API? No, <laughs> That's, that, that was my answer today. Today, my answer was no. So the biggest model that I run on a regular basis on my personal machine is 5.4. So let's jump over to that real quick, okay? So that's annoying, let's go to popular. There we go. So 5.4 five, here is a 14 billion parameter model. It runs pretty well on my machine and it's only nine gigs. So I'm pretty happy with how 5.4 runs. I don't feel that I actually need a bigger GPU to run 5.4 well on my machine. I'm quite happy with what I have. So where does this land me? This lands me in what I was thinking about today. Do I wanna spend 500 bucks to essentially be able to run only 
like 24 billion parameter models locally when I can currently run 16 per billion parameter models locally. I, I won't be able to really realistically reach that 32B, I don't think. So let's just take a look real quick. Um, let's look at some of these llamas because I, I know, oh no, they don't even come in 32. I thought they did. Um, so QWQ, that's one that's popular, QWQ. So that comes in 32B. Let's check the size. 20 gigs. Yeah, see, so that's not even going to fit in that 16 gigabyte card. So basically what this $500 card would let me do is run one model that I really like locally, even though I can currently run it on the web. So the other option is like a RTX 3090. Let's just see what they look, what they're priced at right now on Newegg. So 3090, we're looking at like two grand. <laughs> Oh, that's a lot of money. Uh, so let's look at lowest price here. Uh, it's And that's also like, this is an old card. Okay, so here we go, we're at 16. And yeah, I know there's some of you out there are gonna be like, yeah, you can get it on eBay for like a thousand. Yeah, you can get used ones on eBay for like a thousand. Um, but that's still a thousand dollars, it's twice as much. And these are 24 gigabyte cards. What can we fit on there? Well, we can fit QWQ on that card at 32B, but personally, I don't like reasoning models. So that doesn't really, offer me any advantages here. So long story short, where did I end up? Where I ended up was I started thinking about my use case. What do I like private AI for? I like private AI for helping me with emails. I like private AI for helping me with rewriting things on my own personal papers and such. And I like private AI for doing RAG. But here's the thing. I don't think I actually need much bigger models than what I run now. Think about that for a minute. Like. There, there's a big gap, right? So there, there's a couple different sizes of models. We have these tiny models, and I think they're generally terrible, so I don't use them. At least they're terrible for my use case. I'm sure they're good at specific things, but for my use case, they're not good. I'm talking about like the 1 billion parameters, 2 billion, 3 billion parameters. Most of those don't function very well for me. Exception, granite 2 billion parameters does work pretty well for me. Outside of that, I haven't had the best luck with those. So the sweet spot for me, from what I've found for small local models, is between that 8 and 14 billion parameters because there's a number of models that come in those sizes. They tend to run well on my 8 gigabyte graphics card. And I don't have a current Mac, but I'd imagine that models that size probably run pretty well on a Mac too. And that is why my thoughts right now are that the hardware you own is probably better than the hardware you don't for most people's average use cases. Now, I know there's people who do fine tuning, that's different. I know there's people who have to run these big models locally. That's different. So what what are my current thoughts? What am I currently doing? I am using Open Web UI for my local models, as I showed you before. I like it because I have a whole bunch of local models here, right? You can see I have just a really nice list and I have some of my uh, custom models written here as well. And then for external, I have it hooked up to Mistral and I have it hooked up to Gemini. So I have, and then I have my own custom models based on those two things, right? So that gives me access to web-based ones right here in Open Web UI, and I don't pay for those. Those are free. However, it does, they do use your data as training data. So I think that is a wonderful solution. The hardware you have to run your local small models and then hook up these free APIs. You can also hook up paid APIs, right? So if you want to use Claude or something, if you have whatever your, you know, pick your favorite flavor of LLM, you can do the pay-as-you-go API and connect it to Open Web UI so that you can have all your stuff in one place. Now, I don't currently do that. And the reason I don't currently do that and have a paid one, I know in a video a little while ago, I was talking about, you know, how I was thinking about switching away from chat LLM. And in reality, what I realized was I'm not gonna cancel this yet, okay? And why? And that's because in my use case, I use all these different models for different things, right? So like, I really like Perplexity Pro when I do a search. I really like to use Claude for coding. I really like Gemini 2.5 Pro for a lot of different things. I don't know if you guys have tried that model yet, but it is sweet and it is really effective. So I, I've been really, really happy with Gemini 2.5 Pro so far. Um, and then the new GPT 4.1, honestly, haven't tried it out that much yet, but my typical workflow has traditionally, when I'm using these really big models, kind of gone from Claude to GPT. And now I'm finding I use Gemini 2.5 Pro. And so what's the reality of this? The reality of this is I personally feel that LLMs are accelerating at such a rate right now that I don't want to commit to one particular LLM. I don't want to commit to paying only for Claude or only GPT or only Gemini. 
I really like the flexibility that chat LM offers me. And I know you're probably thinking like, Noah, you kind of said the opposite in your in your last video about chat LM. Well, the reality is I want you guys to know my honest thoughts about these things. And my honest thoughts about these things change over time, right? They change as I use things, they change as new models come out, they change as new hardware requirements come out. And I just think that right now we're at this point where so much is changing with LLMs. These things, you gotta remember, they're only three years old, right? I think it was November of 2022 when chat GPT first got released to the world. Think about where we are now compared to then. Two and a half years. Think about the innovation that's taken place. I don't know if you guys use the original chat GPT, but personally, I thought it was really bad compared to most models that we have now. Like a lot of the local models, like Granite, for example, I personally feel that in a lot of ways, Granite 3.3 8B is as good as if not better than what I remember of the early versions of ChatGPT, right? We are seeing amazing advancements in LLMs. I mean, even think about Gemini. Like I did not like Gemini personally. I didn't I didn't like it very much until Gemini 2.0. And then at 2.0, they made some really great advancements. And now at 2.5, it's even better. And I didn't know that was even going to be possible. So as I thought about like, what do I wanna spend my money on? And uh, like using this for academic use and uh, like I mentioned before, I don't I don't do fine tuning quite yet, so that's a whole different conversation. Most of my use is question answering, rag, um, those types of things, uh, writing code, all that kind of fun stuff. Then I don't think I need different hardware than I have currently, and I think you probably don't need different hardware either, because if you have certain things that you need to keep private, then there's probably a small model out there that'll work pretty well for you, given your hardware constraints, and. If you are like me and you don't want to subscribe specifically to like one particular LLM, Chat LLM offers a really good opportunity here to try out all of these different models. And I mean, I honestly don't use DeepSeek, but it doesn't bother me that it's listed because one day I might find something on DeepSeek I want to use. And then I don't use Grok. Um, uh, I haven't used Llama 4 Maverick yet. I'm excited to do that. I just haven't done it yet. Like I like that they keep these things updated with the most recent models and I don't have to buy another service to go get that. Now, Chat LLM has some pretty cool other things coming along as well. I, I don't want this to be like a marketing video for Chat LLM, so I'm not gonna go through all the other features that it has right now. At, at some other point, when I, whenever I do my next like monthly review or uh, you know couple month review, probably do like one six months out of the initial thing. So that's probably next month coming up here in a couple weeks, I would guess. Um, I'll do a more in-depth review on Chat LLM, but here, here's the takeaway message I want you guys to have from this. And I, I spent too much time thinking about this, to be very honest. Um, I, I'm really curious about what you guys think too. So please let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. My thoughts right now for students and faculty or other people who are resource constrained, and I know all academics are resource constrained, as those who are resource constrained, we don't just have tons of money laying around. The computer you have is probably better than the computer you don't for the, you know, for LLM use cases. So unless you are, you know, working on machine learning, in which case you probably already have a pretty nice machine, or you are somebody who definitely needs to have large models, or your machine, your computer hardware is really quite old, then like chances are you can run a reasonably sized model. If you have a computer that's, you know, with that's within the last five years and is relatively recent, you can probably run a reasonably sized model on the hardware that you have at reasonable speeds. If I was gonna make a blanket suggestion for the smallest model that I think will run on most machines and like be pretty good still, Granite 3.32B. That is a quite small model. I think it will run pretty well on even machines that don't have a GPU and you know, you're know you kind of running CPU only. Don't quote me on that because I haven't tested it. I've only tested it on my machine, which has eight gigs of VRAM, but I, I'm, I feel pretty confident recommending Granite 3.32B to people because I use that model. Even with having more VRAM available, I still use the two billion parameter model, particularly for RAG. I, I really like the two billion parameter model. Um, the eight billion is also really good. And like I said, the biggest model that I find myself using locally is 5.4 and that's 14 billion parameters. So those models I think will run on many machines pretty well. And I know there's a lot of machines it won't run on, right? Like we, we just need to be honest with ourselves. Some of us, you know, we might be using Chromebooks or something like that where we don't have the compute available. And that's a little bit different story, right? In that case, we might not be able to actually have the compute resources to be able to use some of these local AI models. But if you have a computer already that's capable of running open web UI and running some of these smaller models or even these tiny models down at like 2 billion parameters, 
it might not actually be worth you going ahead and buying more expensive equipment. One of my students pointed something out to me the other day. They said, Noah, how much are you paying for chat LLM? And I said $10 a month because that's what it costs. It costs 10 bucks a month for access to all these different LLMs. And they said, uh, how, if you buy that new GPU, because I was, I was talking about a 3090 at the time. So they're like, if you buy that new GPU, how many months will it take for you to pay off how long you could have been using chat LLM instead, using better models through chat LLM. And I was like, why do you have to bring things up like this? <laughs> so like, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna actually do this math. So I pay 10 bucks a month. I already know the answer to this and I'm sure you do too. But let's say we have $1,000 for a new GPU. Uh, and we're gonna divide that by 10 bucks a month that I pay for chat LLM. That would be 100 months of use of chat LLM, 100 months right? That's years. That's many, many, many years. So his point was over that many years, like let's say over the next like six or seven years, do you really think that whatever model you got that 3090 for is going to be still the best model that you want to use? And my answer is like, of course not, not with the speed that LLMs are moving at. And he's like, so why would you invest in hardware that you just told me is probably going to be outdated? And I was like, man, you just saved me a bunch of money. So this all brings me back to my conclusion that I think that the hardware you have in terms of large language models right now, unless you need the privacy of a private AI model, right? Unless you need the privacy of a private AI model for what you're doing or your work is around fine tuning and things like that, then I think the hardware you have in this case is probably better than the hardware you don't. That's Noah telling you, you probably don't need to spend more money. And this is from the guy who wants to build more computers. Like I was literally called my brother and I was like, talk me into the, like, talk me out of this. And he just brings up the, he brings up the same thing my student did of like, how long will that card be relevant? And I'm like, oh, I don't know, a couple months, maybe if I'm lucky, maybe a year tops. And he's like, what can you actually run on that that you can't already run? I'm like, I don't know, like one model that I use for some things, but not most things. And they're like, what's the point? So I'll get to the point so I don't I don't keep rambling here, friends. So what is my point? My point is the hardware you have is probably the, better than the hardware you don't unless you need that privacy layer. If you need that privacy layer, it's a totally different conversation. Second, I'm still a fan of chat LLM. I know in my last video, I seemed like I was kind of going downhill with it and I was thinking about changing. That's actually not the case anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm back on the chat LLM train. Are there something, like could I save a little bit of money if I was only using one LLM? Probably for my use case. But what I realized over the last couple of weeks since I made that last video is I really like the flexibility of being able to jump between leading models all in one place. So that said, I'm gonna stop talking here. Uh, I wanna know your guys' thoughts on this. Drop me some notes in the comments if you don't mind. What are your thoughts on this idea of the hardware you have is better than the hardware you don't? And this idea of like using chat LLM for web-based models. I do wanna just address one critique somebody had here in case somebody brings it up, which is they said um, they essentially didn't like chat LLM because you couldn't have folders to save your chats in. You actually can do that. I don't know if that existed at the time. It might not have, but it does exist now. I'll show you guys that whenever I do the six month review or whatever it is, which will be sometime next month. So that said, I'm really curious on your thoughts on this. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Um, please, please feel free to share your thoughts. So that said, have a great week, guys. I will see you in the next video.